This is the free motion quilting tutorial for Ebbing Tide. This design is stitched very similar to Barrier Reef. It's kind of the same idea. It's a foundational design, only the foundational line you're stitching is actually a row of circles. So what I'm doing basically is I'm just stitching a line of circles, as big or as small as I want, and I'm taking this throughout my quilting space. So if this was, let's say, the border of my quilt, I would take this down the middle of that border and kind of wiggle it around and make it nice and fluid and organic so it filled the space evenly right through the center. Now the second part of this design is to simply go on the one side and you're going to do these bouncy echoes. This is very similar to Barrier Reef. This is actually exactly like Barrier Reef on this side at least, where you're just connecting in that space in between the circles, bouncing up and around and building up that texture. And you're going to fill one whole side of the circles with this type of echo. And what's really interesting is this design is actually kind of a study of two different forms of echoing. One form of echoing is what I call connecting echoes, and that's what these are, where they come down and they touch in between those circles, and it builds up the thread just a little bit, it adds to the texture and the dimension of the design, and it makes kind of a different effect on your quilt. The other form of echoes are non-connecting echoes, and then we're going to play with those on the opposite side of this line of circles. So if you were going to use this in the border of your quilt, and you were using it to stitch right down the middle of the border, one part of it would be filled, one half of it would be filled with these connecting echoes, these bouncy echoes, and the other half is going to be filled with non-connecting echoes. This is what makes it different from Barrier Reef. So you can see it gets very, very dense. I'm fast forwarded here just a bit, and it gets very dense when you get down in this uh, middle section, especially when you've got a deep curve. And the best thing to do is just try and keep it consistent. Um, you're going to have to just kind of try and keep those bouncy echoes happening. And whenever it gets down so small, you might want to just simply make one nice little echo that kind of fills the area and get yourself back out of there by travel stitching. That's really the best way of getting out of that space. So I'm going to continue to fill in uh, this little extra section and then we're going to move out to the outside edge. This is going to be a design that's going to work best in the areas that you really can uh, kind of let it take off and show off and fill the space completely. You don't want to try and squish this somewhere. You don't want to try and squish it around an applique or a motif somewhere it's going to be really tricky to fit into and fill around simply because this is a texture that can stand alone and should stand alone by itself. Now let's check out those non-connecting echoes like I was talking about before. What I'm basically doing here is I'm running a line of stitching along these circles but I'm not letting the line connect at any point. I'm not bringing the points of this line, like right there, I'm making sure that doesn't touch the circles, that doesn't touch any previous line of quilting. I'm keeping everything from not touching. So these are two different forms of echo quilting, and you can kind of already even see the different textures that they create. Connecting echoes create a much darker, denser texture because of the levels of travel stitching they involve. Non-connecting echoes, as you can see, are simply rings, almost like what happens when you throw a pebble into a pond. They're rings and rings and rings that don't interconnect, that don't touch, and because of that, they're a lot lighter in color, they don't stand out as much on the surface of your quilt, but they still add a subtle and beautiful texture wherever you put them. Definitely play with this design and experiment for yourself which type of echoes you like the best. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish Ebbing Tide. For over 300 videos on free motion quilting, plus many tools, tips, and tricks for making this job easier on your domestic sewing machine, check out DayStyleDesigns.com.